everybody, welcome back to Bish's RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd, or just welcome the first time if you're a new member here at the RV Nerd Herd. Got some nice updates for you on the 259 FKDS Freedom Express. This is an RV that comes in with a living room super slide and a bedroom king slide in the back, nice and private under 30 feet tip to tail tongue to bumper which is not an easy thing to pull off right here now there's certainly some other brands that have some similar floor plans but freedom express has kind of um carved out a little more unique niche uh of their their version of a front kitchen um they bring to the table a uh, i think a very solid outside camp kitchen complete with a sink so you actually have a place to wash your hands which is very rare in a layout like this also the fact that they're doing a king bed while not exclusive is a little more uncommon this is carpetless and ventless flooring all the way through. Actually, Freedom Express was one of the earlier adopters of that kind of thing. A lot of other brands have since caught up a little bit, but they're still driving forward. This year, they've redesigned the front of this RV. Um, what, what's interesting is they redesigned the front ends of all the Freedom Expresses normally to help enhance bedroom storage around a front bedroom but this is not a front bedroom it's a front kitchen as a result what we ended up gaining was bigger deeper cabinet space in that front kitchen which i don't think having more storage in a kitchen is necessarily the wrong idea but i actually do have a couple questions and ideas for you when we get to that kitchen maybe some feedback to relay to the factory in the meantime though you have your choice between a high to bed or a theater seat a freestanding table or a booth you're looking at a, obviously a combination of that today i don't know why i felt the need to bring that up these are also a little bit taller inside which I really like just for generally walking around but not to mention the shower headroom in this is a little bit nicer now front kitchens normally have crap for outside storage but that is one of the things I think Freedom Express has done really well and we're gonna hit a bunch of other little updates as we go let me know what you think about this one if you appreciate how we share the good with the bad hit that subscribe button let's get in there and it's, it's kind of fun to see a little bit of new life into uh, a model that's been around for a while. A lot of times manufacturers find something that is very popular with them. They leave it alone. It's like they're afraid to touch it anymore. But that really hasn't been what Freedom Express has done over the years. Like that electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster in the shoe garage right there. Didn't really used to have that stuff. You know, that is based on like, you know, viewer and owner feedback and input. And I really appreciate how they pay attention to that. Now, I'm pretty sweet on Freedom Expresses, and this is one of their better done floor plans. I think the taller ceiling in here is something that I appreciate, but something that you may appreciate is not just the, the bonus heating that you might get off that, uh, that fireplace, which is standard, by the way, but the potential for air conditioning here. This is, um, by default, a single 13,500 BTU air conditioner. You could option that into a... No, actually, that became uh, a standard 15,000 BTU air conditioner. Apologies, I got that incorrect. But you can build this 50 amp with a second air conditioner back in the bedroom, which is a, a, a cool thing. Sometimes in, in a sub 30 foot floor plan, some manufacturers just don't allow for that whatsoever. And the model has great windows uh, coverage in, in terms of square footage, but to be fair... The windows are mostly staring at the neighbors. You have very little window coverage on the campsite of this RV, although that front windshield does help it feel not quite so enclosed and, and parked in. Again, we are very, very pet friendly with the way that they do the uh, the flooring and the heating system in this. Uh, also, the, the household outlets over there next to that theater seat, handy little touch if you wanna have like a phone charger near you, although it does tend to reach one side of the, uh, the sofa a little bit better than the other one. Now, you do have your choice between a, uh, a theater seat or a hide-to-bed sleeper sofa. I'd be kind of curious to know which one you'd go with. And I, I tell you, Freedom Express has that kind of classic Coachman vibe where they're still very much in tune with, like, maximizing storage potential. I mentioned phone chargers a second ago. One of the other kind of cool things that's it's easy to miss, you have a little kind of phone charge pocket over here right above that little fireplace. Now, as we uh, work our way around the other side, you may have noticed how there is a full viewing window uh, in the entry door. By default, it doesn't have a privacy shade, but that's a very easy thing to, to, to pick up, purchase, and to pop in there. And I'm not trying to defend it. I would personally prefer the privacy shade to already be installed from the factory, but they, they don't. So I'm just arming you with the knowledge that may help you decide whether this is the correct RV for you or not. They do have a different fabric decor, it looks like terracotta clay color to me, and I, I personally don't know that it really blends well with the wood tones, but the wood tones are lightened and brightened up significantly from what we saw the last two or three years, and I think a lot of people to that are singing the hallelujah chorus, brother. Um, Your air conditioning, another neat thing about this is uh, your, your ducting is what's called vented and louvered. Every single central air duct can turn 
and open close individually. So you get to really just uh, decide how your um, AC is sort of distributed through the RV. Now this is interesting up here, and I've got some questions for you about this front kitchen because I think it's one of the main focal points of the RV. First of all, um, they redesigned the front end of all Freedom Expresses this year. They're not quite as shaved back in the forehead as like my hairline, for instance, you know? Mother Nature is firing me one follicle at a time. But that was really done for the benefit of front bedroom models to maximize storage around a front bedroom. This is not a front bedroom. This is a front kitchen. So as a result, we are now gaining far deeper and more functional overhead cabinet storage space there. Um, and it is all pocket screwed lumber core cabinetry. That means that you actually do have real screws into wood. And I want to address this. When you look down at a glance, the kitchen cabinetry almost feels lacking because like you don't see a bunch of drawers and storage and stuff down below. That's because one of the things Freedom Express has done is maintained a full front pass through underneath that front kitchen counter that almost no manufacturers do. Most RVs that have front kitchens have really bad outside storage, sometimes almost none. Well, what they did is they made the storage fully functional outside but they made it so you didn't have to crawl on your hands and knees inside to try to get to it. And we're gonna get all this open in just a minute. One of the other questions that I have for you is like, it is cool that you've got a nice big deep chunk of counter space, but unless you're gonna be putting like an air fryer or Instant Pot or something up in that corner, like a coffee maker, it's, it's kind of hard to reach. It's a lot of storage that isn't necessarily close to you. So my idea, because we're going to see that this RV has a huge walk-in pantry tainment center behind the, uh, the, the TV. My idea is instead of this, what if they just ran that countertop all the way across to the wall? Personally, I think that that would really open up the counter space. It'd make the RV look and feel nice and big. Um, and with that front windshield, it would look more symmetrical. Right now, it, even though the front windshield's in the middle of the RV... To me, it looks a little funky and off, although I, I'm glad it's there. Don't get me wrong. I don't want it to not be there by any means. Um, but you would lose a little bit of pantry space over here. So is the, the juice worth the squeeze? I guess I'm kind of curious as to uh, how you feel about that. Now, kind of like the sofa, you've got a choice over here between the dinette that we're looking at and a, uh, a table with floating chairs. And I'd be kind of curious to know which one of those would you prefer to go with, uh, you know, and uh, why? Now, one of the other kind of cool things here is that floating table that comes with the dinette. It is uh, very, very multifunctional. You can swing that thing around. Obviously, it can fold down into a sleeper, and there is storage below the booth that you do lose when you go to the table and chair, so it's always a push and a pull. Now, looking through all the kitchen storage here, again, the overhead cabinet space is now much, much deeper than it used to be. It does mean that to the left of the microwave around that corner, there's now a big, deep pocket of storage. It's a little tricky to get to, but at least it's not wasted. You know what I mean? I, I, I like that they didn't waste the storage. Um, they are using, as you can see, that refrigerator door that flips both directions, and that big pantry could also be a closet. So if you do want extra closet space or a big closet right by the door, that does mean that you know uh, you, you really need to utilize the pantry that I suggested maybe getting rid of um, over in the kitchen. So that's kind of why I want a little bit of your feedback here. I think I would personally prefer to uh, extend the kitchen countertop because I feel like there's enough storage in this kitchen otherwise, but that's my two cents. I don't know that more storage is the wrong answer, but I also don't know that more countertops the wrong answer. And I think I've talked about this uh, enough at this point. You might notice how all the windows can open for airflow, which is really nice with the exception of the windshield. So technically saying windows is accurate. Um, <laughs> and uh, there's an interesting little accent light inside of those cabinets and under the dinette bench ends. Now it does have its own separate little switch, which is uh, kind of cool. And all of our ceiling lights in our main cabin and in our bedroom and bathroom will each have their own like one room switch to flick all those suckers off. Then you might have some extra lights like above the bed or uh, say like above the um, uh, seating or something like that. You might have noticed how that TV can pivot around. So if you do butt scoot boogie your way over here into the dinette or table and chairs, you can still enjoy a little bit of afternoon entertainment even while you're hanging out. As you can obviously kind of see here, TV's mounted up a little high, but it's not all the way against the ceiling like some brands, so I'll give it a bit of a pass. Moving into the bathroom, we have porcelain foot flush stool, 
and it looks pretty tight. Um, when I got into it, it's it's above average. It's not terrible. So I'm going to give that uh, that little area there a little bit of a pass. Overall, I think they do a pretty good job. Helping you give a place to dry off some towels. It's it's simple, it's basic, but we got ourselves an octopus fight club coat hanger situation here. Or it kind of looks like a puppy nose from this angle. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just missing my dog uh, right now. This bathroom doesn't have tons of storage, but again, I'd call it adequate. If you notice here, uh, you know, you got some linen space. You obviously have your, uh, you know, dedicated, um, what do I want to say there? Uh, medicine cabinet kind of area and a little spot below the sink. Not a great place for a wastebasket in the bathroom, though. That could be handy. This right here might be one of the major kind of uh, stop points for some folks. It is a radius shower. Trying to tuck it in around the corner like this, it's just, it's it's a small space and it's what they had to go with. Although, Freedom Express is being six foot nine tall means that a person like me, a little over six foot, does have some decent headroom in that shower, which isn't too awful bad. Although, the elbow room can potentially leave a little something to be desired. Now, there is a little gap at the top of the door, but with the ceiling being extra tall, I don't know who's going to possibly, uh, you know, be able to peek over that thing unless they're Jeffrey the Giraffe with one of those, I don't know, like Navy SEAL endoscopy tools or something like that. Oh, I never thought about this until just now. The location of the converter panel, I think, is going to be inaccessible when the slide is closed. Now, that being said... There might be a way around it. I'm not sure. Okay, hold on. We'll, we'll get back. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, moving back here. The bedroom is in an arrangement that is not camera friendly. And I loathe using fisheye wide angle camera lenses. Uh, in a few minutes in this video, I am going to jump over to a little bit of that though, just so that you can have a, a decent feel for how the whole bathroom looks and lays out. I do like the window coverage in here, which can really provide some great, uh, you know, light or airflow. <clears throat> and by default, 30 amp, we do not have AC prep up here, but you can get this in a 50 amp version that will include second air prep back here in the bedroom, and you can actually get that installed from the factory. Now, up here uh, around the corner, that is where our bedroom kind of TV entertainment space would be. And I tell you what, it was not easy sliding my shoes off uh, to, to scoot my way up onto this bed while on camera, but I have managed to do so. <laughs> now, again, it is uh, a ventless flooring system, and you're looking you're like, holy crap, are there three heat vents here in this bedroom? And no, there's not. There's a heat vent. That's the bottom one. The top two are air return vents for the, the back side of the refrigerator, which is in the camp kitchen, which is behind this whole blank wall that we're looking at. Because you look at it, you go, why didn't they do anything with this? That's a refrigerator, that's a camp kitchen, and that is storage down over there. And you'll get to see all that stuff utilized on the outside of the RV. But first of all, taking a look at all this up here, let's actually crack that storage open up top. One of the nice things here is it's unconventional, but they actually gave us some very good, respectable kind of storage space here. And uh, overall, I, I think that it is very functional, very adequate. Because uh, you do have that big closet across from the bed, but there's also a big dresser next to the bed, which, again, like I said, unconventional, unusual, but effective, you know? Now, you may have noticed, we have suddenly uh, jumped up to the bat perch, and we are now in crazy fisheye, fly-eye, wide-angle lens mode. But again, I wanted to give you kind of an idea for how this whole thing is laid out. And I will tell you, hopping my butt up here... Um, while, while live recording and commentating a video, also not an easy thing. <laughs> so let me back up just a little bit. Once again, my goal with this is not to make you motion sick because I feel like that's the kind of the result that this sort of, uh, camera lensing has. I just want you to get the best possible idea for how the whole thing kind of lays out in relation to one another. Now, uh, a note here on this bed, this is a 70 by 80 king bed. And if you look really closely, the bed base is also basically king sized. So this is a model that pretty much just is what it is. If you wanted to go to a queen bed, you could, but there's always going to be some decking sticking out, maybe jabbing you in the leg a little bit. You won't really gain any more walk around kind of space with it. If you're looking for a queen bed, maybe something like Rockwood or some other similar brands might be the one to go with. But flipping around and doing a 180, looking at the RV with the slides closed in road mode, um, when you try, you know, merging 
multiple slides into something under 30 feet, something's got to give. And in this case, it's the travel access. So giving you the reference to the entry door right there. The good news is like your refrigerator, uh, a good chunk of your kitchen storage, the sink, that stuff is readily accessible. And if you are crafty and you think about it, if you leave the bathroom door all the way open and then do something to secure it in place, kind of like I've done right here, you can snake your way into the bathroom actually pretty easily. The trick with this is while I can potentially get to the toilet, not by default, but while you could rig it up to get to the toilet, you can get to your kitchen there's no way you're squeezing through there and getting to the bedroom. And again, your converter. This is what I got. Uh, I went, oh no, earlier. And then I said, we'll come back to it. Your converter is blocked by the, uh, the living room slide when it's closed. So God forbid you blow a fuse and your super slide doesn't open. You're going to have to basically manually override this thing, which isn't fun. It takes a while. I've done it twice in my 15 year career and I'd be happy to never do it a third time. Um, you know, it can be done, but that might be a thing that you want to consider. So little feedback portion of the, ah! oh, <laughs> I thought I was going to die. Okay. So the feedback portion of this video, sorry about that, um, that spooked me. I wasn't expecting anyone else to be standing in the bathroom with me. Uh, ideas. So I threw the idea to you of what if we uh, extended the kitchen countertop? Leave me some feedback on that. But also, what is your input on this? What if you, instead of having that converter panel buried where the slide blocks it, what if it was down here behind the fireplace? It might be hidden behind the, the door, but so what, right? You can get to it, but now we're eliminating potentially even more storage. What is your thought on like, what should they do, if anything? Not that they have to, but if anything to improve the RV. And also don't scare yourself to death in the bathroom. I'm such an idiot. So this is an RV that when it first came out, I didn't know as much about towing as I know now. And my frame of reference was a little bit skewed. And I used to very hardline refer to this as half ton towable. And you know, maybe, but the thing is, uh, the more that I've learned about stuff, um, I, I've learned that when you check out the hitch weight of this one, especially once you load that the, all the front cargo and everything into it, and having that super slide right there all the way in front of the tires, it gives this thing a heftier hitch weight than a lot of half tons should be handling. And even then with a 9,000 pound GVW, depending on where you're taking it, half ton may not get the job done. So I think a three quarters, probably a solid baseline reference for this. Um, there are some half tons that could safely reasonably handle this RV, but you really need to double check your, your weights, measures and specs and everything else. Now up front there, uh, they've been doing 20 pound tanks uh, for a long, long time because it's easy to change them out on a Sunday. And you see that yellow thing up on the tongue next to the red battery disconnect. Well, the yellow thing is a uh, TPMS relay because this has factory standard tire pressure monitoring, which is actually kind of cool. And this right here, I wanted to start on this RV to showcase this because it's a very rare feature when it comes to front kitchen RVs. It's a full pass through. However, in order to access that, you'd have to be smarter than me and have the door unlocked before we get here. <sighs> So like I was saying, <laughs> full front pass-through compartment. And once again, this, you know what? It's like, this is a boring thing to talk about. Every travel trailer and their brother has a full front pass-through, except this is not common when it comes to front kitchens. In fact, having a full front pass-through like that in a front kitchen is about as rare as hen's teeth. Cause hens don't got teeth. <laughs> anyway, um. They, uh, you know, as a result, once again, we kind of talked about it when we were inside. When you're inside the RV, looking down at the cabinetry by the floorboards, it looks like it's lacking or something's missing. Again, they made the storage functional outside in a way most front kitchens don't. And do you really want to crawl on your hands and knees to get to kitchen storage anyway? Because that's 
borderline what it would sort of require. Now, as we're looking over here at the power awning, I, I do want to draw your attention to the fact that you have, a, again, those kitchen cross breeze windows, which is nice, and you do have a stovetop vent hood that exhausts outside. Now, Freedom Express does something most brands don't do, and it elicits a question from a lot of people that you don't normally need to ask. What is that door, Josh? Like, I get that question all the time. Um, it's kind of cool. Their 12 volt compressor fridges, they include a little service access panel right there and kind of like cough medicine. I hope you never need it, but God forbid you need some work on it. It's nice to have the ability to get to the back of that thing. These stable steps have since become standard on just about everything else. What's funny is I'm actually starting to see some manufacturers offer the traditional fold out steps that we had for years as an option instead of stable steps now what do you think about that i'm kind of curious now um, we are running on import tires but this is a wide stance stability axle system and as i mentioned previously this does come factory standard with a tpms system now in case you're curious they do make x chocks and even a more ride suspension outfit for wide stance axle systems like this so if you're not going to be parking uh if you're going to be towing a lot that might be something you want to consider uh, looking into. Now, they again, they do a good camp kitchen on this and a, a front kitchen inside with some kind of camp kitchen outside. It's not like they're the first and only ones to do it, but they're about the only ones I know of that actually still give us a big camp kitchen where we've got a griddle, we've got the bigger outside fridge, and we actually have a real sink with a real drain, not the dog bowl dish that you sort of flip water onto the ground and the seasonal lady next door is like, you're not supposed to flip water on the ground. Ah! That's how she has sounded in my head for about all 15 years of my career. Now, to be fair, I've met just as many, actually probably more nicer seasonal ladies and gentlemen than that one. And to be fair, seasonal lady yelling at us is not wrong you really aren't supposed to just throw your gray water on the ground so she's got a valid point you know we can't criticize her too awful hard i don't think you did i think that the voice implied that <laughs> now this because the awning arm is next to this it doesn't have any sort of hold back i don't really i don't know that it's that big of a deal this is what i just call a bonus why not storage space they had a pocket of space inside and they said why waste it why not utilize it outside and it actually makes for a really good storage location for like your griddle and all that stuff it'll fit right in there now down below here they have an enclosed and forced air heated belly um, you can also, last I knew, in, in manufacturers change little things like this all the time. I haven't seen uh, a more recent updated build sheet in a little while, so apologies if this is not currently correct. Uh, verify this with our team if you're curious. You can option a radiant barrier package onto these, which is actually standard on the Liberty Edition Freedom Expresses uh, that is not standard on the Ultra Series right here. Now you saw how they, they've got a ladder right on top of this. That'll get you up to that fully walkable roof and they now have a 200 watt solar package available. Um, and on the back here, you see that yellow sticker and those brackets hanging down. This is prepped and ready if you want to add aftermarket or uh, I think they offer the factory option to actually apply a two inch receiver hitch to the back of this. And I'd be kind of curious to know what you think about that. Like the idea that it's prepped for a hitch but doesn't actually include one. What I like about that is because it's prepped for a hitch, that means that they have the extra strength and gusseting on the chassis so that if you want to, uh, you know, be able to add the hitch or put some weight back here, you're not necessarily overloading and tweaking things. And once again, I realized I forgot to unlock this thing, so I thought I would you know, spare you the trouble of watching me sort of juggle my keys around again. But I wanted to point out that, you know, a lot of front kitchens, they will have storage under the bed area like this. And certainly this one obviously still does. And I like how you can see that aluminum structured uh, bed decking that they put together there. Um, but a couple things. Remember, you do have that full front pass through and that brown thin box on the bottom. That is actually a box that contains an, uh, a floating picnic table. So this RV actually includes its own two foot by four foot table. This is one of the only really like ugh, factors on this RV for me, I think. It's a dual headed sewer monster. You've got your bathroom black and gray back here, which is very easy to get to. Let me get you actually up and around here. You see that that one's not hard to get to. And in between these slides, this is where you have all your hookups, which is nice and smart. The one that's a little rougher is that one right there. Your kitchen gray outlet is dead under the middle of the slide. And uh, 
<laughs> the gate pole valve to access it is also under there. And I and, and I get how that's potentially, a, that could be a deal breaker factor right there. I hope you appreciate that I went out of my way to point that out for you. You know, that might mean that you don't buy this RV, but I hope you appreciate that, you know, we are shooting you straight so that, you know, we will find you something that does work for you, get your second camera the first time. But a, a, a maybe way around that, and this is a very hypocritical answer. I'm first going to tell you, I don't recommend what I'm going to uh, suggest, but I will also tell you, I would probably still do it myself. So, you know, we've all got those kind of like, well, yeah, but you said, yeah, I know. But anyway, what I'm getting at here is because that, that, that gate valve is dead under the slide, it's hard to get to, but it is a kitchen gray tank only. So if you were to just have on-site park hookup and leave the gate valve pulled and let it just drain down into the sewer drain, it's really not a big deal. Theoretically, it could build up some kind of gunk and stuff, but gray tanks, unlike black tanks, just don't have as much solid matter to be a problem. And before you leave, just make sure you flush it out real good, or if you're gonna be there seasonally, you know, hook it up and, and run a bunch of water and flush it out good a couple times. So there's ways around it. It's not awesome, it's hypocritical, but that's, that's an idea. At least it's up to you to decide what to do with information. So if you've seen it before, what do you think of the updates? And if you haven't seen it before, <laughs> what do you think of the RV in general? What do you like and what do you dislike? Now, as I've mentioned a few times, they're not the only ones that make a front kitchen rear bed slide like this. I'm gonna leave you some links in the description to check other videos on other makers of that same kind of layout that I've done from other brands. Like uh, Cougar's got a new one that I think is really good. Uh, Rockwood's got really the one that everybody's kind of chasing and defining. But there's some other brands out there that make these layouts as well. Like Surveyor's got their own kind of front kitchen thing sort of happening. Um, take a look at those. Let me know which one you'd go with. And uh, obviously, You'll also find links to pricing and availability on our, uh, available through our website right there uh, in the description section as well, or scan that with your QR code uh, on your phone if you're just watching on TV. And until next time, thanks again for tuning in. Tank care, stay safe. Did I say tank care? Whatever, stay safe, have fun. I'm an idiot, everyone. <laughs>